If you are a fan of roguelike deck builders, party-based RPGs, games like Brutal Orchestra, or just a fan of, of mildly sexualized anime women, uh, this might be the game for you. Welcome to, to Chrono Arc. This is a, a, a brilliant little single-player roguelike that released May 2nd of this year into its uh, full release, and I've heard nothing but positive things. It's, it's got 90% positive reviews on Steam. Um, I'm just craving a, a nice juicy game to, to go into, and that is not a euphemism. <laughs> as we get into the game. Um, let's play and see what's going on here in, in Chrono Arc. New game. I'm ready. Start a new one. Put me in, coach. I, I am, in fact, ready to play today. I've seen a lot of uh, very interesting gameplay mechanics uh, in this game, so I'm excited to explore everything that can happen. I, I think that there's a, a, a brilliance around deck builders that are also party-based RPGs, right? So it kind of gives you the ability uh, to to mix and match characters to to build different builds that are very interesting. Welcome to the Ark. This is a little little spooky. This is heaven, where everyone's dreams come true. I don't think this is heaven, brother. <laughs> People live together for a single hope. Yes, this is the world everyone wanted. Spooky? Come on, tell me. What do I desire? God, I desire you clicking that like button <laughs> and then subscribing to the channel. That's what I desire. Okay. Look at this! God, how, how cute is this right now? And a, a little Pokemon-like porcupine-looking thing. It's a, a, a po Pokepine. How about that? Um, Wazda to move. I can press shift to run. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, this does not look like a <laughs> tech-building, party-based RPG, but you know what? I'm, I'm all in. Lucy. Hello. Who, who calling me? Oh my god, she just teleported. Oh no, he's hot. This way, Lucy. You're always too slow, kid. She's just a child. Don't be too hard on her. Yeah, be hard on this chick. She don't got eyes. We need to go just a little further. Do you think you can make it? Yes, no problem. Don't push yourself too hard. You're the treasure of the investigation team after all. Haha. Ha. God, I love games that use haha ha in their dialogue. <laughs> Just opens up so much good potential. E to interact with things. Okay, can I interact with the wheelbarrow? No, I cannot. Can I interact with the bench? No, I cannot. I can probably interact with, with these guys. Um, hey, this is me. I'm not scared as long as everyone's with me. I'm, I heavily question mark that one. Can I talk to you? We'll take care of the monsters. Just lead the way for us. Don't worry. We'll protect you with our lives. Let us know if you have any problems. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna continue, I guess. Oh, it kind of rainy now. Or just staticky. One, one of the two. I have a feeling that we are going... Oh, no, never mind. It's just, a <laughs> it's just a campfire. I'm trying to add more spooky than there is. Hey, kid, try eating this. It's freshly cooked. Stay warm, Lucy. Wow, it's so warm. <laughs> After collecting the last piece, we'll head to the clock tower. Our journey's end is not far off. All thanks to Lucy. Hee <laughs> hee dot dot dot. Hmm, I'll have to give you some credit. Alright, maybe... I mean, talk to this kid. Hey kid, you're pretty helpful, you know that? No, you're just a kid until we get back to the clock tower. Everyone, thank you so much. Can, can I sit down... Or around the fire? We're almost there. Time to restore the world. Be careful. Don't let your guard down until this is over. It, it, Lucy's dead, right? Like, that that's what they're trying to portray here. Is that Lucy's dead in, in, in quote-unquote heaven. And is now... Oh, God, brother. <laughs> Lucy, you're looking a little... You're looking a little rough around the edges. Bro, I did not... S oh my god, I did not sign on for this. I only got a little careless. How could it end like this? Joey <laughs> is no longer moving. It was only a kiss. It was only a kiss. I'm afraid this is my end. Lucy, run as far as you can. Leon is no longer moving. I love how that's their bar for people dying. Erg, a little bit. If I'd done a little bit better, we could have activated the clock tower. Azar is no longer moving. 
Bro, Lucy gonna be alive, yeah. Ah, but who is uh, Sephiroth over here? She kind of said. No. <laughs> how did this happen? How, how, please, everybody wake up. I don't care what happens to the clock tower anymore. So please. Oh, God, that is grating sound. Spooky? Spooky? Oh, she, she about to get decapitated? <laughs> All right. I mean, just some calm decapitation on a... Wednesday uh, afternoon when I'm recording this. Dude, her eyes are, are dead as all anything. Don't worry. This is not the end. It's just another beginning. A time loop in my roguelike? Okay. Because you are the hero of this world. Okay. Yeah, if you say so, to be honest. I suppose I can I can be the hero if you want me to. So far, crazy gameplay in the first six minutes. Uh, WASD going crazy. Um, objective: explore the twisted land to obtain to obtain the, the the time shades and activate the clock tower. Okay, I'll walk out the door. I guess. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Are you ready? Dot dot dot. Let's leave now. Wait a minute. Leon notified the investigation team of your presence. Try talking to any investigators you want to recruit to our party. Everyone's fired up from the news of us finding a timeshade. Okay, lastly, are you really sure? About what? Despite what I said yesterday, there's no need for us to hurry. Best to be thoroughly prepared. On that note, how about practicing in the training grounds? Yeah, that sounds good. Good choice. Let's go to the training grounds. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, so that, that seems like it would be a pretty pretty big positive here. Put, put me in the training grounds. Oh, the music. It's like I'm in a Kingdom Hearts game now. Welcome to the training grounds, Lucy. I'm your temporary instructor, the one and only Phoenix. Did not expect Walking Big Bird to be teaching me how to play Chrono Arc, but here we are. I'll teach you everything step by step. You better be grateful. Now shall we learn the basics of combat? Yes, I do think we shall. Combat works by selecting a skill from your hand and selecting a target. So, a deck builder that does not have my deck on the bottom of the screen. The music, holy brother. <laughs> we we go in sicko mode now? I'm getting copyright struck in this one, for sure. For sure. Every skill requires mana to use. Mana cost is a skill shown inside the purple gem. Understood, three mana. Each one of these is, is a one cost. This is your max mana, you have three at the moment. Keep it in mind, try attacking the enemy. Okay. Basic attack does 12 damage, 96% accuracy. Critical hit, minus 10%. Not really sure what exactly that means, but sure. Um, another basic attack here, 98% accuracy. And then a basic attack, 100% accuracy, but a little bit, of, a little bit less damage. And then you have an action count. Reduces when you cast a skill, can act when it reaches zero. So so the enemy doesn't take a turn. I can just continue to, to do things for nine turns, right? So I'm going to hit you for 12, and then I'm going to hit you for 12, and then I'm gonna hit you for 10. Good job, you skills discarded added to the discard pile. Since there are no more skills to play, you should pass the turn by clicking end. Okay, that sounds good. I can also press Q. Alrighty, now I have two basic heals. Start your turn, you draw two skills, regain all your mana. Start your turn, you draw two skills. So we had three in our first hand. Um, when there are no more skills in your deck, the discard pile is shuffled and added back. Since an ally is hurt, try to use the basic heal. So heal, heal for six, sure. Your ally is healed up and you have some remaining mana, but there are no more attack skills. Casting another healing skill would be pretty useless, I agree. In these situations, use the exchange feature. Okay. Let's you discard a skill from your hand, draw a skill from the deck. I'll put a draw skill at the top of your deck. Try exchanging the basic heal and then use draw. Okay. Interesting. Um, that's a cool mechanic, for sure. So I'll, I'll exchange that card. And in turn, I get a draw. Draw two skills. If there are no skills in hand, draw three skills. That's pretty nice. And then uh, we attack. Look at the cost of the first basic attack. 
Weird, right? Why does a basic attack cost two and the others cost one? This is because of overload. For every stack of overload on an ally, their skills are increased by one for that turn. Basic heal that you used overloaded your ally. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'll add a bunch of skills in your hand, so try casting them with overload in mind. That's a lot, man. That's a lot. Okay. So, so these are now in overload. This skill gains 100% crit chance if the user already casted a skill this turn. Interesting. Um, I don't have a good way to use that, though. But I can use this, right? What is seal, by the way? 12 damage. Success chance uh, of weakening. So a weaken attack, success chance 110%. <laughs> I mean, weakening you does sound good, but we definitely want to play with the combo system here. So, so hit me here. Then, then you go with ah, but how how did that how did that get get increased? Like, why why are you now in overload? So may, maybe if they already use a skill you're overloaded as well i thought it was maybe just like that heal card can i can i look at my deck apparently i cannot look at my deck okay um i still think that the combo attack here is good for 27. allies gain overload by casting skills and overload causes a skill cost to increase yeah that this makes sense now overload stacks when you play a skill but all of it is removed okay once you run out of mana too quickly don't worry there's some skills that don't cause overload ah such as uh, these these rushes, potentially. Majestic Phoenix gifted you with two mana and a couple skills. Notice how these skills have blue gems instead of purple. These skills have a property called swiftness. Skills with swiftness do not overload characters. Okay, try using them for yourself. Some of them have special effects, so read. Not good at reading. Um, okay, exclude. If used, exchanged, or discarded, remove from the deck. Okay, I mean, those are those are just, that's a free 21 damage for me. Each attack skill played will reduce this cost. Love that for me. Uh, and then two, two swiftness ignores enemy action count. That's sick too. Yeah, these also do the same. Um, okay, so I mean, this is this is pretty straightforward. We we go kind of nuts on, on you. And then this becomes a, a zero cost attack that does 21 damage. We love that. Isn't it fun to spam skills without worrying about overload? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I enjoyed it a lot. What happens if you're out of skills in your hand? In this case, try using a fixed ability. Look at the bottom of the screen. Should be a hexagon-shaped skill icon next to the ally portraits called a fixed ability. Okay. Add a skill to your hand. Increase morale is a once skill that can only be used once per battle. Sure. It's a consume and its cost is zero, try using increased morale. Okay, gain two mana this turn. Once, and its swiftness, that's good. There's a lot going on, man. Like, we're, we, need to, we need to get ourselves figured out here. Look at the fixed ability at the bottom. It's the same skill, but it costs one more. Try using increased morale. Okay. Sure. So now I have three mana. Most skills can be registered as a fixed ability, which lets you use them at any time. However, their cost is increased by one. Only one fixed ability can be used per turn. Okay. If you want to have a skill available at all times, good idea to register it as a fixed ability. Okay, now that's out of the way, try passing the turn. Register it as a fixed ability. What if I wanted to hit you, man? I mean, like, I, I kind of see no reason not, not to hit you here. I, I don't know if I can roll over mana, so I, I think that hitting you is the better play. Okay, you've hit me for four. And now I got some, some more cards in here. A lot of cards in here. I'm sure you have a grasp on how to use your skills now. Then it's review time. I've changed the deck, added a couple skills. Exchange, overload, swiftness, fixed ability. Apply the knowledge we've learned. Deal as much damage as you can. Okay, so we, we have a fixed ability down here. Ascending Slice. Create illusion swords equal to the amount of illusion swords in hand. So I have one illusion sword in hand. Engine burner. Apply two more stacks of grievous burn. 
Okay, you do not have any burn on you, so I think that this is useless. This is intriguing. Um, I mean, I definitely want to increase our stuff. Select a skill to gain swiftness. Reduce its cost by one. Okay. Repeatedly deal seven damage for each illusion sword and illusion sword buff in hand. I think these are both illusion sword... This is an illusion sword buff. This will create illusion swords. So I, I think what we would want to reduce the cost of I can't I can't reduce the cost of that it's just cards in hand so let's let's reduce the cost of this and give it swiftness right then we'll pop this to create illusion swords whoa that was kind of cool I mean it's not exactly what I wanted to do but that's fine right um and then you do this right so, so that's a, a big 23 damage play. I am now out of actions for the turn. Make sure you exchange skills you don't need. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the, the heal potion would have been a good one. Yeah, increased morale, I guess, is pretty useful. And I should have done this to create more illusion swords first. Yeah, I mean, I played this, like, almost entirely wrong. <laughs> that was... It was bad, okay? It was bad. They're gonna yell at me, potentially. Or they're gonna spawn another enemy, and he's also hot. Perfect, as they say, great teacher makes a great student. There should be no issues with attacking, but the problem is defending. Enemies won't just stand still, take your hits. On that note, I'll teach you how to minimize damage. Next mechanic I'll introduce is action count. I've figured this out. How do I explain this? Seeing is believing. Try playing some skills, pay attention to the action count. Okay, so what are you? Deal additional damage equal to the target's pain damage per turn. Pain damage per turn. You have 0% uh, resistance of, of pain. I think that this card is kind of useless, but I can't I can't use it. So that's fine. I'll hit you with it. Puts a little little intoxication, 8 damage per turn on you. And then I'm going to 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 hit I wanna, I wanna target, you got taunt on you or something? Yeah, you got taunt on you, gotcha. So I gotta hit you first. Okay, I am on fire. Enemy moved even though you didn't end your turn? That's obvious, enemies won't just stand still. Most will try to attack you in the middle of your turn. Important to check to see when enemies attack. Yep, okay. Got that all figured out, man. Completely understood. Remember swiftness? Not only does it prevent overload, prevents enemy action count. Beautiful AoE heal skill. Okay. So here's my accelerate. Select the skill to gain swiftness and reduce its cost. Beautiful. And then this is a three healing per turn to all out. Well, it's a healing six and then a three healing per turn. This is a crazy card, man. Beautiful. Good heal. Did you see that after using a swiftness skill, enemy action count did not change. I'm sure you understand how they work. Let's move to the next turn. I like the fact that you get the, the extra healing too, man. It's a crazy card. It's a really, really good card. Okay, everybody takes 9 to heal 3. Take a look at your ally's health bar. It turned green by the amount of HP that was lost. This is called Healing Gauge. Try using this heal skill on any party member. Okay. Ow. So, heal for 11. Uh, I'd like to use that on you here. Ow. <laughs> Characters will faint if they receive damage at death's door. Recover from death's door by healing. Okay. Look at the health bars. You can see that the healing gauges are somewhat gone. I'll adjust the party health, so try healing again. Okay. So let's... You want me to heal him? Okay. Can I heal you now too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Party member with healing gauge received the full effect of the heal, while the party member with no healing gauge recovered only a little bit. Having healing gauge is like being wounded. You treat the wound before it becomes serious. Okay, that's wacky for sure. <laughs> it's a little wacky, but we, we, we can figure it out. Okay, on to the next step, try pressing the end turn button. I can do that. I'm good at clicking the end turn button. 
So, so Lucy down here is in a little bit of hell. At least I think this is Lucy. I don't know their names. Where are you going? Don't run away. I promise we're almost done. Gotta teach you about pain damage. Damage that cannot cut your healing gauge. I've given a pain debuff to a party member. Read the description of the debuff and try casting a skill. Receive five damage if you cast one of your skills. And this is one of his skills. Okay. So five damage comes in. Now you still have pain, right? So these are also going to cause pain. And they put that next to me too, which is actually very nice. Um, so I'll, I'll keep hitting you. See what I mean? Heal engaged and disappear even after taking damage. Most pain damage is caused by pain debuffs. Many debuffs to watch out for besides this broken one. Okay. Um, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Um, but we, we're roguelike gamers. So you never know. There's a chance we can pull it off. Alright, time for the final stretch. This time I'll teach you about Standby. Standby is a feature that lets you reduce the enemy's action count without having to play a skill. You see how the enemy's action count is 1? Try clicking the hourglass button. Okay, reduces the enemy action counts, allows them to act first. I am trying to figure out why I would want that right now, but that's fine. By using Standby, you reduce everyone's action count by 1, cause the enemy action count to 0. May seem like a useless mechanic, but there's many applications. For example, you can create opportunities to heal in between enemy attacks. Okay, yeah, I understand. Situations where it'll come in handy. That's it for the basics. There will be countless obstacles and strategies waiting for you in the twisted land. Okay, okay. Don't panic, apply what you've learned. I I will I will not panic. This, this was, it was a hearty tutorial, man. I mean, the tutorial took up like 20 minutes <laughs> of the episode. And now, I mean, now we like start an actual run, um, which is fine. I'm not familiar with Chron Chrono Arc, so I'm going to stay on normal. Uh, different game modes. I'm going to, I'm going to play normal because I'm a, a roguelike gamer. Uh, and then we have our, our people. So, I mean, look, who are you? Hein? Part of me just wants to go random. <laughs> okay. Okay. I understand. Full understanding of the situation. Look at all the locked characters, two men. Crazy. Um, I like Azar. He's kind of cool. So so let's uh let's recruit you. I, I don't know how to recruit you, actually. Oh, they all have skins too. Pretty sick as well. Um they're I mean look, they're they're all really horny. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, bro, how do, how do I actually recruit you? I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying very hard to recruit you. Oh, E, I have to read the instructions. That's crazy. Um, you were a burn character. I kind of like the idea of, I mean, maybe you go with a burn character, right? These, these were the two that they just had in the tutorial. So, so let's run them. And we'll see where things go. Explore the Twisted Land to obtain the Time Shades. Can I go this way? Nah. <laughs> okay. So stand on this weird thing. Beam me into the sky. It's where I want to be. Alright. So we're here. What do I got on me? Lucy's Necklace. An active item usable in the field. Revive a fainted ally. Interesting. Restore a charge at a campfire. Bread. Restore an ally's health. And a key, a key to unlock something. Okay, so so we can explore, right? Which is kind of neat. Um, adds a little bit of movement into a deck building game, which I think is a fascinating idea. Like there's there's a chest in here, right? Oh, well, look at how cool this is, man. Oh, and it needs a key, fantastic. Okay, new equipment, Hunter's Ring, attack power plus two, accuracy plus five, or the Courier's Ring. Evade plus 15. CC Resist goes up by 30. I mean, give me, give me attack power, right? And then can I, can I apply some, uh, some items? So, so Lucy's just kind of here. But then these guys have, like, the, the full deck and, and then some, right? So, so let's increase, let's increase your power. And then this is an active item, whereas this is just like a, a passive item. So let me back out, uh, and then we'll, we'll come down here to something. I mean, there's there's 
clearly something here on the map. And that looks spooky. <laughs> that looks spooky. So so what what are you trying to teach me over here? Boss is protecting the gateway. Make sure to prepare before engaging in boss battles. Okay. Is there anything else that was up here? I just want to make sure that I'm I'm covering all my ground. I don't know if there's secrets. I don't know. Like there's Yeah, spooky world out here, for sure. I'm not sure what, what the, the yellow is on the map. I mean, maybe the boss gate. Okay, so that's the pathway to the boss. Understood, understood. I really like this little map mechanic, man. And I actually really like that glitch effect. I'm a sucker for a glitch effect. Time to show you my flaming chainsaw. So so each of them currently, their uh, preserve skill is just a basic attack, which is kind of neat. So. I mean, look, I'm a pretty simple guy here. I I think that you go all in on a basic attack to kill this. And then, uh, just being logical, a basic attack to kill that. Okay, loot some stuff. Healer's potion, some gold, some soul stone. Can be used to upgrade levels and max mana. Take it all, okay? You can upgrade your character using soul stones, okay? So, so, ah, I understand. So these are my current, current soul stones. So I'm Lucy, but we use our party for, for the skills. So I can increase my max mana, um, and I have two soul stones, right? Or I can level up my, my characters and they get a little bit stronger. They have a little better resistance. Very interesting. Um, I don't know what the best play there is yet. Um... I feel like increasing max mana is, like, really good. Increasing card draw also probably really good. But I'm gonna level up this guy. Start of each turn. So so the, my new passive is Illusion Swords. Start of each turn, topmost skill in hand receives an Illusion Sword buff. If you play or discard a skill with Illusion Sword buff, create a zero-cost Illusion Sword attack skill in hand. Okay. And then I learned some new skills that I can I can do here. So Illusion Flash plays directly into our Illusion Swords, right? Although this also does. <laughs> Select an ally, create an Illusion Sword in hand that they can use. Deal 7 damage to an enemy. When attacked, remove 1 stack and cast Illusion Sword to all enemy for 8 damage. I mean, that seems good. Um, eight damage for each illusion sword, or skills above and below this skill gain an illusion sword buff. These these are all really interesting, man. Um, this is crazy expensive, is the only thing. But I don't know if we could... Like, we, we could... Reduce the cost of it with Accelerate. So I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do this. Increase your max mana and add draw skills by spending soul stones. Yeah. Okay. Um, very interesting, to be honest. Very interesting. Let's go straight ahead. We are going to go straight ahead. What is what is weird tangle? Garden of Keys. All allies take a small amount of damage and then I choose something. Obtain one cursed uncommon tier equipment or obtain 1200 gold and a Lucy curse skill. Difficult decisions early. I'm going to take this one, okay? Um, all allies take six damage and obtain a key, or all allies take six damage and I obtain a skill book and 200 gold. Give me give me the skill book. Usable in the field, view one random class skill per ally and learn one. Okay, and, and some gold. We don't, we don't know, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a shop at some point um, that will be useful for us. But so far, uh, we'll, we'll just keep the, the good times rolling. Press M to open the map. Look for exclamation points for, for points of interest. Fast travel to a blinking area by clicking on it. Interesting. Okay, that's that's good to know too. So, what, what are these? Old pile of skeletons? Uh, soul stone. I mean, we love that. Soul, soul stones? They, they good, man. They very good. Very useful to have. Okay, combat. Okay, a little beefier enemies than last time. This guy is taunt, so he has to be defeated first. And you attack in a couple turns. 
Add an illusion sword to hand if you play or discard this skill. Okay. Well. I mean, all of you took damage, actually. So the, the basic heal... The basic heal is valuable. Um, but if I use the basic heal, then... All of your... which For which we have none. So yeah, you know what? Let's, let's use the basic heal. I'm going to use it on you. And then this you you want me to adds an illusion sword to hand if I play or discard this because your ability yeah okay so so we're gonna use that it hits for twelve that creates the illusion sword discard it after one turn I'm gonna hit you and then I'm going to attempt to exchange out this basic attack for a basic protect. And it doesn't use any, uh, put it on you, doesn't use any action turns, right? I still have two mana. This is doing 14 damage. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to kill you. Because there's no reason for me to not kill you. I could have stand by, but I don't think there's any reason to. One attacked cast tea time. Okay. You, you just kind of vibe. I'm going to end my turn. The turn system, very interesting in this. So, so basic attack for 15, and then we kill you. Okay, small barrier generator. Usable in battle, create a party barrier of 12. Some coins, some soul stones. Dude, the soul stones come out like, like crazy. <laughs> they, they are literally everywhere. Okay, blood bank sacrifice 24 health. No, no, no. Give me a random positive enchantment. Um, so, is this basically I have to put... Yeah, okay. So, apply an enchantment to the ring. The deadly. Debuff success plus 10%. It can be used one more time. I mean, let's just make this thing crazy. Crit chance goes up, and now it's, it's precise. Accuracy plus 4%. So, so now if we take a look at you, your accuracy is 107%. I think that we want to increase max mana. So that we can ensure that we can play. We, we've been able to play all of our stuff, to be fair. Um, am I ready for a boss? I don't feel that ready for a boss, but let's humor it. Cerberus, hello. Okay. Music going crazy. So, so we don't need to heal. And they're probably good discard opportunities for me. So so hit you with a basic attack that makes an illusion sword. Oh, you hit me for 10 right there. I mean, I probably should heal now. But I'm going to use the heal that is not on him. So so I'm going to I'm going to heal you. You're back up to 16 because your your gauge was was high. Okay? That's good. Then we're going to exchange this. Really not what I was looking for, to be honest, but I'll, I'll hit you. And then a basic protect on you. And I still got two, I can hit you for 15. Reduces whenever I cast a skill. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of how it works, but uh, okay, and then you just did it anyway. <laughs> Okay, I don't fully understand why that was the case. So, so you're now... You're now going to attack on my next... Next play. I think I would like to... Apply Illusion Sword buff to two skills in hand. It's applied to the top skill in hand without... No, just, just put two Illusion Swords in your hand. And then, and then we kill you, right? I mean, it's it's really just this easy. I get hit for 10. I mean, that's, that's life. Okay. But then we, we clobber you with an illusion sword. And you've been vanquished. Get out of here, you little freak. Holy loot. <laughs> There's an insane amount of loot. Uh, a soul stone throwing dagger equipment. Just a lot of increases to a lot of things. A box of friendship used to obtain a random gift. 
Golden skill book, view one random rare skill per ally, learn one. A key, another soul stone. Some credits, permanently unlock or upgrade items at the arc. Oh no, meta progression in my roguelikes. Okay, so let's, I mean, let's let's obtain a random gift item. Um, I'll use it. <laughs> it's adorable, okay. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what that is for what it's worth. Um, gift items. Stuffed animal. Stuffed animal designed after the cute grass hedgehog. Hugging it will raise your happiness level. Bro, what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> I don't, I don't know the value of that. One rare skill per ally. Okay. Blade Starfall. Countdown 2 will cast if X amount of skills are played or if you end your turn. Interesting. Um, also, Swiftness. Cast Illusion Sword on all enemies per sum of the skill cost with Illusion Sword buffs. Okay. Or Combined Arms. Cast a random attack skill in the deck that is not... Nah, we're gonna take this. And then throwing dagger. I mean, I kind of just want to keep buffing this guy. Like we we increase your attack power, eighteen point five, kind of kind of sick. You're not as good healing, but I think it's pretty pretty cool. Um, so I can also change my fixed ability. So we, we could theoretically change it to Illusion Flash. But the fixed ability always gains plus one to, to the mana. So I, I can't quite make that happen yet unless I increase. And that's, that's a five to increase that. If I increase that again, then we can do some really interesting stuff with this. Um... Maybe, maybe you can go with this as your fixed ability. I don't know, dude, there's a lot of decisions uh, to make in this game. Which is cool, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. I, I just, I gotta figure out what the, what the heck I'm doing. I mean, zoom is, is fine. You reduce armor on the enemy. Could be good as a fixed ability. Would cost two now, but I, I think that that's fine, right? And then now we go through. And that takes me to our, our next our next location. Campfires are located between stages. They restore health and revive our, our fallen allies. Consume items differently inside a campfire. For example, bread will heal all allies instead of just one. Interesting, okay. So you, you want to save your, your stuff for, uh, for campfires if possible. So right now, um, use a camp man, recruit a new investigator. Okay. Um, obtain tokens of friendship by gifting items. Select an item to gift. Here's a stuffed animal. We don't know their preferred gifts though. He kind of looks like the kind of guy who would love a stuffed hedgehog. Here you go. Do you, do you like, uh... Like the hedgehog? A gift for me? I haven't done anything to, to deserve this. There's an anime girl in the middle of my dialogue. I managed to like soft lock the game for a second. No, I'm really grateful. Thanks, Lucy. I'll put it to good use. Azar seems to be thankful. Okay. I mean, that seems great to me. All right, this place looks safe. Let's rest a little before going. Yeah. How is it, the twisted land? Um, it's scary. A little scary. Thanks to everyone's efforts. I think I can keep moving forward. I see that's a relief. Azar, do you not feel scared? No, not really. We investigators roam around the twisted land like it's our own home, so maybe we're all used to it. But some of them still seem scared. I suppose newcomers can still feel that way, but you're also a newcomer. From what I've heard, you're only a promising talent who recently joined. Haha, <laughs> you're right. Maybe I'm just a natural born fighter. Fighting is fun because I can feel myself become stronger. I'm jealous I want to become strong too, at least enough to not be a burden. I think you can become pl plenty strong. Of course, you have talent. Okay, you've mastered the basics in just a few days. That's because you taught me so well. No! Talent was given to you in order to activate the clock tower thanks to your appearance at the Ark. We're finally able to begin our journey of collecting time shades and saving the world. 
That's why I think it's a good sign you want to become strong. How do I become strong? I feel like I'd only get in the way. No need to rush. As long as you keep at it, your strength will follow naturally. One day, slowly but surely. That was nice. Friendship with a, a relationship with the Tsar has improved. God, I love min-maxing my relationships. Token of friendship obtained. Okay. Um. Can I can I see everybody's health? I think everybody's full health. Like, yeah, you're 22 out of 22. You're 27 out of 27. G give me give me a uh, a recruit now. How does this work? Oh, okay. We we just got names in the the damn newspaper. So Hein is a, an attacker. You're a, a healer. What what are what are our uh, can can I see my people that we have? Do why are there so many characters in this game? And and the chunk of monsters. Um. So you're you're a healer. You're a fighter. You're well. You're a shielder. You're a healer. You're a healer. Okay, we should we should bring in Pressel here, cause you're a healer. Strong healing and support items. I'd like to recruit you. Okay, and then I don't really think I want to go to the blacksmith yet. Creates a new item by reforging two items. I mean, I guess we do want to combine them, right? Because if I if I combine these, yeah, it becomes a heroic item. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a mistake and this is not going to actually combine them. It's just going to make a new one. But. I mean, it kind of combined them. And now it only takes up one slot. I mean, that, that seems like that was probably intelligent, right? Uh, skill book we could use as well. I, I don't think I need to do anything else here. And then I don't think I need to use a camping item. I mean, I guess I can use... I can use the book at this point. Well. I don't think I can actually use the book. Just leave here. I, I think we're good. I think we're good. Hey, that's going to do it for this episode uh, of Chrono Art. Good start. A lot of tutorialization today. Um, but we, we got our... Oh, look at this. Activate a relic's power by placing it on the display stand. Just just save here, please. Um, we'll figure out what comes next in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Leave a like on the video. I'll see you uh, next time. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.